As shown in vlog five, prescribing errors are commonplace and can be fatal. In this vlog, we look in more detail at what individual prescribers can do to ensure safe practice, some recent research and available resources. As with previous vlogs, this is one underpinned with information from trusted sources and it includes confronting some difficult issues. This approach is supported by the philosophy of learn not blame. As we discussed in one of our live sessions, a no blame approach involves transparency, accountability, and working together in an atmosphere of trust and openness. That's working together transparently with patients, given the opportunity to lead on their own care. If we go back to vlog number one on shared decision-making, it's important to fully include the patient, carers, and their parents if it's a child. I was reminded of this in the 2022 ads talk where there was an interesting discussion between clinicians and parents confirming the parents as a vital source of evidence in clinical decision making. In this vlog, I look at some of the resources available, some related research paper, papers and suggest some questions for reflection. In the feedback to our work, we were asked for more information on prescription writing. There's a useful guide to this in the BNF. You can see it on the BNF web or on the app. Firstly, click on Medicines Guidance. If you're looking at the BNF on the web, Medicines Guidance is on the first page. If you're looking on the app, click on More when the three dots appear, and then click on Guidance. Then you will see a section on prescription writing. In addition, there's a specific information on prescription writing on the controlled drugs and drug dependence. This is clear, concise information available on the web and on the BNF app, and it's a really useful aid memoir, something you can refer to quickly wherever you are. This summary slide may also help. When it comes to dose errors, does it look right? Do you need to ask somebody to cross-check your calculation? Then, particularly where the patient has multimorbidity, complex conditions, maybe as part of a shared care prescribing process, and possibly where there's more than one prescriber, is the medicine part of the plan? How much involvement did the patient have in producing this plan? Does everybody involved have access to an up-to-date copy of this plan? How often is the plan reviewed and by whom? Is there a lead prescriber? Other considerations include, is the indication for the medicine clear, especially important for off-label and PRN medicines? Are the directions for the administration of the medicine clear, or does the prescription just say as directed? What monitoring is needed and who does this? Does the patient know the purpose of this monitoring and what to look out for themselves? Is there a specific re review date or end date? Remember vlog number two on information mastery? Here's a selection of recent papers which I found using this approach. In seeking useful information on this subject, I set aside time to look through the available information, focused on summary information and trusted sources, and then identified a number of reports and articles that highlight some of the key learning points. Firstly, I found this information on reported deaths related to medicine errors. This contains one year's figures from 2016 to 2017 and names the drug involved. Whilst this report does not contain detailed analysis, it's just a response to a freedom of information request, it did make interesting reading. In my estimations, of the 72 reports listed, 19 look to be prescribing errors, 30 of the 72 relate to an admitted, omitted drug or ingredient, and five appear to be primarily related to the wrong drug, and 18 are related to the wrong frequency or dose. In looking specifically at drug-related deaths, there is also a useful new study and resource available. This is the Preventable Deaths Tracker. This is a research project from the NIHR School for Primary Care Research that looks at prevention at future deaths reports that are made by coroners. This is the Twitter hashtag. There are several ongoing studies as part of this work, including looking at coroners' prevention of future deaths reports around suicide, opioids, 
medicines and misuse drugs, cosmetic surgery, and deaths from complications of robotic surgery. The website is preventabledeathstracker.net. Here's a useful paper that looks at dose calculation errors. It's well worth reading. The source of information for this paper was incident reports over a two-year period in Norwegian hospitals. This paper lists drug classes and their relationship to dose calculation errors. The study found 23% of incident reports related to analgesics, 12% related to parenteral nutrition and intravenous fluids, 13% to cardiac therapy, and 9% to antibacterials. This is followed by chemotherapy drugs, drugs used for diabetes, aesthetics and antithrombotic drugs, and other nervous system drugs, which the study listed as methadone and buprenorphine. 78% of the medicines errors in this study caused patient harm. In line with other studies, the authors found double checking when carried out without a clear procedure to be an unsafe practice. In common with other papers, this research identified a high rate of medicine errors in children, particularly related to drug calculation errors. The study also identified some of the human factors that contributed to errors in the dispensing and preparation stage of medicines. The study recommended organisational, technical, technological and educational measures to empower health professionals to be able to prevent calculation errors. In this paper on medication errors, the authors categorised the prescribing faults under the following heading. Irrational or inappropriate prescribing, ineffective prescribing, under-prescribing, and over-prescribing, and errors in writing the prescription. This table from the report shows how the authors categorised their errors. It may be worth pausing the video and reading through this. Finally, going back to an article from the Pharmaceutical Journal mentioned in an earlier blog, what are the main area causes of medicines errors? Here's the top 10 list from the article. In conclusion, here are key areas which will help prevent medicines errors so we can provide evidence that lessons have been learned. Identifying and documenting incidents and near misses. Reporting incidents and near misses in an environment of trust, respect and accountability. Analyzing the root causes. Changing procedures where necessary. Providing training and, where appropriate, competency assessments. Auditing and reviewing the effectiveness of the changes and taking actions needed to improve safety. Then going back into this safety loop again, identifying the problems and working through them. Here is an idea for reflection. Here's the statement from the Aronson paper. We all make errors from time to time. There are many sources of medication errors and different ways of avoiding them. However, we must start by being aware that error is possible and take steps to minimise risks. The essential components of this are monitoring for and identifying errors, reporting them in a blame-free environment, analysis of the root causes and changing procedures according to the lessons learned. How is this achieved in your area of practice? Are there areas for development? How can this be achieved? I hope you found this blog helpful. You can find a template for reflection here. It may be that this could be used for your appraisals, peer reviews, and to go towards revalidation. We welcome your feedback. There's a short three-question survey listed on the links section.